In this module, we'll learn all about QFD, Quality Function Deployment, a tool that can be used to improve the quality of your product or service. Customers are, and always should be, the focus of both Lean and Six Sigma. Customers are the ones who define what quality is. They are the ones that part with their cash for the product or service. And with that in mind, it's extremely important to ensure products and services fulfil customer requirements to the fullest extent. Simply put, whoever can provide the greatest quality product with the least cost, i.e. the best value, will reap the long-term rewards. A great way to translate customer requirements into a product or service is through quality function deployment, also known as QFD, ensuring you are giving the customer the most value possible. I will first provide you with an overview of what a QFD looks like. I will then go step by step through a practical example of how to fill it in and populate it. So this is what a QFD quality function deployment, also known as a house of quality, due to its resemblance to a house shape, is known. Firstly, you have the customer requirements. These are understood through surveys, questionnaires, market research, etc. In other words, what do the customers want? These are often known as the what's. In other words, what does the customer want? The voice of the customer. Next, you have the hows, the engineering requirements or functional requirements. These are the traits of the product or service that can be measured. An example could be the size, the strength of a product, the acceleration of a car, for, for example. They're measurable features. Then you have the correlation matrix, which is the roof of the house of quality. This signifies the relationship between different engineering requirements. We will explain more about this in the next example. And then we have the relationship matrix, and this section is where we understand the relationship between customer requirements and engineering requirements. We then have the last two sections, the competitor comparison, where the product or service is compared against its competitors, and finally the technical assessment, where the overall values are assessed. So let's work through an example. Um, if you find this quite hard to see, then feel free to download the Excel file uh, and you can work through yourself. So for the remaining 10 minutes, let's imagine we are automotive manufacturers looking to design a new car, an, an SUV and we're using quality function deployment as a way to translate customer requirements into our product. The first step is understanding the customer requirements. So the way that you do that is you understand the traits of the car that are desirable. Things like you want the car to be fast, efficient, safe, big, reliable, cheap, and many more options. And the way that you find this is by conducting questionnaires, market research uh, with consumer groups and surveys, that sort of thing. And once you've done that, you ask them to quantify the importance uh, of each factor. And then you work out the relative weight simply by doing the customer importance divided by the sum of all of the others times by 100 to get it as a percentage. And in reality, this will be a list a lot longer than it is now, but to keep it simple, we've kept it to just these six requirements. The next step is to find the functional or the engineering requirements. So these are anything that you can measure of your product and service. So for this example, we've gone for weight, engine power, cost of production, expected life, dimensions and acceleration. And again, there are many more that you could record, but we've just for now kept it simple with these six. The next step is the direction of improvement. So what way do you want these factors to move? So ideally you'd like a low weight, high engine power, low cost, high expected life, big and fast acceleration. Then we move on to what's called the correlation matrix. So that's how these link, these factors are linked. So this is all about making judgment um, and I would suggest doing it as a group so that you can um, brainstorm ideas between each other and come up with a solution that you think is best. But it it's things like that for this we've got three different 
um, correlation, so positive, negative or no correlation. So the correlation between weight and engine power, we've said, is a positive correlation. The correlation between weight and cost of production, for example, we've said is no correlation because cheap cars are generally quite heavy um, and expensive cars are generally quite light. However, there are exceptions because not all expensive cars use materials like carbon fiber. You get expensive luxury cars like Rolls Royces or Bentleys that are very heavy. So we decided to leave that one blank. One that we said was a, a negative correlation was weight and acceleration. And you fill out all of these. And then the next step is to move to the relationship matrix. And here, this is where we've got three different relationships, strong, moderate and weak. And it's between the functional or the engineering requirements and the customer requirements. So how is weight related to speed? And we've said it's a strong correlation. Weight and efficiency, strong. Weight and safety, moderate. Weight and size weak and etc so you fill these through and again try and be as accurate as possible and if you can use data to support your reasoning but sometimes there will be areas that you you can't decide between you so you need to just come up with a, an answer and state your assumptions and why so once you've filled this out you then move on to the customer competitive uh, assessment and this is where for each of these customer requirements how does the product that you're looking at compare and for this example we've done just a scale of one to five so five would mean we're we're doing really well in that aspect one would mean we're not doing so well so for example what you could gather from here is our product is not very efficient compared to some of its competitors and also that efficiency is the highest relative weight so that could be a, an area for improvement for us that we've just spotted there. Um, again try and use data for this so if you can a lot of these figures miles per gallon safety figures they're available online or they, they can be found so try and use that to to justify your rating. In terms of a 1 to 5 scale, you could use a 1 to 10 or even 1 to 100 scale if you want. Uh, it's up to you. So now once we've done this, this is the, the key part here, the technical assessment. And what this does is it works out the importance of each of these engineering requirements. So, for instance, we've given the strong relationship the value of 9. The moderate relationship the value of three and the weak relationship the value of one and that's quite common practice with QFD to do that so nine three and one and the way that you calculate this number is you do nine because it's strong times by 20 because that's the relative weight plus nine times 23 plus three times 16 plus one times nine plus 1 times 11, plus 1 times 20, and that will get you your answer. And you do that for all of these, and then you end up with a relative weight and a technical importance rating, and this helps identify which of these engineering requirements, functional requirements, should we look at and are most important. And that is essentially the, the purpose of a QFD to identify the customer requirements, how can we translate them into functional requirements, how can we quantify it and then assess areas for improvement and areas of importance. So looking at this, the weight as an engineering requirement is shown to be the most important technical, uh, technical feature, so that is perhaps somewhere we should look at whereas the dimensions are actually the least important uh, factor.
So before I summarise what we have learnt, uh, I would like to point out that there is no industry or common language used for QFD. Uh, they all follow the same structure and contain the same elements, um, but as mentioned the grading system often varies significantly between them, and it's always good practice to state the values used for each category so that anyone can follow along. So for example, strong is 9, moderate is 3, weak is 1, and there's a scale of 1 to 5 here. Secondly, I'd like to stress that although this tool does use numbers, there is still a significant level of subjectivity with it. What we aim to do is minimise this by using data and facts as much as possible to support our decisions. Um, in order to remove any bias, it's always good to work in a multidisciplinary group, and if possible, have multiple groups or teams completing the same QFD and then compare the results and discuss them after to find areas where you're, you have different ideas. Finally, it's important to understand the purpose and the limitations of QFD as a tool. If we cast our minds back to the definition of lean, what we are trying to do is minimise waste and increase customer value by involving people. What we're doing with QFD is identifying how each functional requirement impacts our customer and this allows us to increase customer value and customer satisfaction as much as possible so that we can focus on the functional requirements that matter to them the most. QFD should always be focused around the customer and is a tool used to answer the question, where should we focus our attention to help maximise customer value the most? QFD is a brilliant tool that enables you to translate customer requirements into the traits of your product or service. There is however one big problem and that it relies on a very accurate voice of the customer. The trouble is, sometimes customers are not fully aware of what they want until it is offered to them. For example, Henry Ford once said, if I, offered, if I asked customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. In other words, it's all about taking the broader picture Instead of designing a saddle that's lightweight and comfortable for a horse, he decided to look at what does the customer really want, and that is a safe, efficient, fast means of transport to get from A to B. So please use QFD in conjunction with the K9 model and try and take a bigger picture understanding of what does the customer really want.